But uh, every other year I go up to Alaska with my dad. Oh, nice. Where do you go? I love it up there. Well, we go to a couple different places, but uh, when you said Devils, I was like, holy crap. Um, I haven't been good fishing in five years. Dude, Devils, man, you're oh. sight casting oh. the bass. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's, the, it's the coolest thing ever. I mean, it's, it's damn near like going to... Uh, Bass Pro. Yes, and standing, yeah. standing up on that thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is insane. Yeah. Well, hold on. You said you want to do some duck hunting. Oh, one hundred. I got a good buddy has. A, um, we have a lease up in Gina. Max, oh no shit. So Max. it's just north. It's you know where Gina is, right? Gina, Louisiana is north of Alexandria. Max goes Bible. duck hunting, but he doesn't actually kill the duck. Duck down on this <laughs> hey, meat. Man, I, it's one of hey, the best. I'm, 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 Matt, we. I don't claim to be the best hunter. I just hunt. Here's what happens when I go Brandon. Duck do you hunt. like duck meat? I love duck meat. Duck down on this meat. See, hey that's yo. a high school. That was a high school thing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so I got a shitload of meat. I'll Max and some. I used to go. We used to go duck hunting back in dental school quite a bit. I don't hunt anymore. But oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I, it's okay. It's okay. Does your shirt say woke AF? <laughs> <laughs> you have some next door neighbors that seem woke AF. <laughs> yeah, they're the, they're the CBD neighbors. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah they, they sell CBD. Um, it's a shame. The, uh, the other three letters. <laughs> so Max and I and, and uh, Craig go duck hunting, and the duck is that flying. one of your personalities too, Jenny, yeah, that's Craig. One, Jenny Craig, Jenny, Jenny Craig, Craig. Uh, Jenny Craig. <laughs> so oh, was that a joke? We, to we him? go in. Son of a no, no, no. So we go duck hunting, and the ducks fly in, and we go, go ahead, Max, take him, and Max goes, <laughs> unloads his three shells. And the ducks just keep flying. Yeah, yeah. calling them in's the <laughs> toughest part. And then, yeah. and then Craig and I shoot, and then all the ducks I, I, I like to give other people opportunities. <laughs> Being the, the, the hey, selfless person that I am. Listen, man, yeah. I didn't know. I went uh, duck hunting in Arizona, and we called them in, and they were low, and then yeah. they landed. And my buddy just popped up and started boom, oh, boom, on the boom. Water. Yeah. You can ground them oh, yeah. in Arizona. Yeah. You can't do that shit in yeah. there, dude. Uh, yeah, in no, uh, Louisiana, you yeah. can't do it in Sabine. You can, I don't know what's against the law, but Arizona. Have you? Do you watch the Meat Eater ever? I, well, there's yeah. a uh, dude. There's one a, of the greatest shows ever. They're on on their YouTube channel. They yeah. got one that's called uh, uh, like Dinner at the Bayou or mm -hmm. Bayou, something. Have yeah. you watched those yet? Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. so good, man. Yeah. It so I'm a big Joe just, Rogan guy, so yeah, I got yeah. introduced to a lot of those guys through yeah. the show. Oh yeah. And, Rinella, uh, dude, that guy's he's doing so, he's the best for conservation and hunting right yep. now than than we've had since. You know, like Aldo Leopold and all I that. love it. And I think that the word's getting out there. And you know, I've always hunted. My dad hunted. Yeah. Um, that's how I grew up. I met uh, so, I was tempted to bring some of my stuff here. Yeah, hanging them up. Yeah, yeah nice. But I'm gonna, you know, we're in Austin. I'm I'm being serious. I'm totally. looking for a while. You, uh, you gotta, well, you gotta, I, you know, you gotta, I gotta tread lightly, you know. Yeah. I, I wanna introduce that to the general population in a way that's not affronting. You know, I, I think I think Max as a, a current That'd I think, good. you know, having, yeah. dude, sustainable sources of meat that are high quality, high yep. grade, that are re renewable if you take care of them. I mean, I'm a carnivore. So, yeah, so much. Oh, really? Ask him. Only. I'm a carnivore. That's all he eats. That's all That's he eats. That's good for you. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't even eat yeah, veggies. I mean, you know, it, and you're taking it, you're getting good sources, I'm guessing. You know? Oh, Yeah, that, that's the key, dude. This factory shit is, factory now, farming is, is Some horrible. of the bullshit, like we ordered from f Flower Child, whatever. Flower Child. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably good, but I like my home stuff. Totally. So, yeah. Um, um, so I'm going in Idaho in the, from the 18th to the 28th um, elk hunting. It's going to be archery season. I also have a mule deer, deer tag. So my goal for this year is to do elk, mule deer, and whitetail all with the bow. My dad left this morning. He's over in um, outside of LaGrange. Birds. Oh, nice. today yeah. and tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I do, uh, dove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Dove season opened that last week. Yesterday. Yeah. Or yesterday, two, yeah. Two days ago. Two so days ago what first. do you think about the studio? Uh, it's cool. No, I mean, it seems, it seems kind of no, kind of like, no, wait. like um, Jacksonville porn or Tampa Bay porn studio. No, wait till. That's kind of no. what it looks like right now. No, I wait think. till we have all the stuff up. It's <laughs> going to be badass. Yeah, I think yeah. there yeah. probably needs to be Our a little more Our neon sign's coming this week. Yeah, neon sign's coming. neon sign's going to be the Yeah, what we need, it's almost it's almost casting. What is it? Casting. Casting. Backroom casting. Oh, wait But if I did know it. Yeah, I mean, I think you need to gussy it up just a little bit. I think this is pretty good for sure. I didn't hear it. So um, I'll turn it off. <laughs> no, no, it was just fun. Right? No, this is fun. 
I like yeah. I like the format. I, I think it's good. Um, you know, we, handsome Dan. Handsome you Dan. know, I think we're, this is a launching pad for handsome Dan's career. We gotta we're gonna collect royalties after he's we famous. Can he can <laughs> sing. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Hey, yeah. I was telling I was telling uh, Allard about when we went to Southern Soul Assembly. Who that was? Warren Haynes, JJ Gray, Mark Broussard, and Sturgill Simpson. Was it Sturgill Simpson or was it? Was Warren Haynes part of that? I thought Warren Haynes was part of that. So it was Mark Broussard, J.J. Gray. Who were the other two? Anders Osborne. Anders Osborne was who that, it, was. That was, it, wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't Warren Haynes. Warren Haynes. And but was it? There was a fourth one. There was a fourth. He said Sturgill. I thought it was Sturgill. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Sturgill. It was. It was pre Sturgill before his pop. No, it, I was watching Sturgill before he popped. Yeah, he, he, like uh, like what King Turd. Yeah. I'm gonna look it up. Southern Soul Assembly. So you can't get away. Next weekend, for Mark. Uh, what's happening next week? I may. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Luther Dickinson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mississippi All Stars. Yeah, Mississippi All Stars. North, North Mississippi All Stars. So it was yeah. JJ Gray, Mark Broussard, Anders Osborne, and Luther Dickinson. That was legit. Yeah, was, and then that's when you had a child. And then I had to leave. Well, she you wasn't born. Remember? You didn't even. You didn't even get to God, watch Anders was. Osborne. I didn't. Yeah, so I was telling but, Allard yeah. about that last night. How how I had to leave in the middle of that. Yeah, is that too much? I, I really, I think we need an intro. It makes you feel comfortable. I think we we need a welcome, welcome to another episode. I, I think this is what we're doing right now. Do you so, want to do you want to practice one and I'll practice one, and then we can just play them and see which one looks better. I think we're doing it right now. Why don't you introduce our guest, Brandon? Well, hey, wait, I before we, introductions, I man, I still have not been offered a drink. Well, that's usually how we start the show, but our well, guest yeah. uh, hey. is, is very thirsty, <laughs> exactly. and it's I mean, very it's, early. It's eight a.m. I mean, <laughs> why are we waiting? Go ahead. Do you want to intro the podcast or do we no, just No, we're going to pre intro the podcast. So remember, we're going to go post after post, then me and you go, hey, on today's episode, we're going to. Y'all have really just kind of screwed this whole first thing up. No, no, this is good. I, mean, yeah. I, I actually yeah. like this. <laughs> yeah, I actually like the this. The banter, I think, this is all right. All right I still yeah, think we should intro the podcast. Handsome Dan says, but it's we can okay. do it. I think by you keep saying, let's intro the podcast, I'm still we're intro the podcast. Okay. For a drink. Uh, we'll get a drink today. Let's get a drink. First, first and foremost, we want to introduce our guest today. Uh, camera welcome. One or camera two? Where are we at? Right we're, there. we're all on okay. this camera all today. Right, we're going to have other cameras in the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there'll be one right we're, there. Amazon. <laughs> sure. Lost some shit. We're not supposed oh, to say it? big name okay. companies that could sue us. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes and we've already fucked this up. Right. Well, hey, it's been a great run. <laughs> um, so first of all, this is Sleeping Around the Podcast with Dr. Brandon and Matthew. Um, this is our test episode, and we are blessed enough to have one of Brandon's partners and close friends uh, Dr. Max Kerr. Hey, so thank you for being are. here. Thank and you. he's very thirsty, 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 so I'll let Max you guys uh, talk about each other, and I will pour this man a drink and everybody. I'm going to take out my um, uh, clear aligner therapy. Your clear aligner therapy. <laughs> we cannot talk about any. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Max Kerr is uh, one of my good friends. He's uh, We go way back. Went to dental school together. Met uh, years and years ago. I guess when did we finished dental school? 20, 2007. Seven finished dental school so we had four years in dental school together honestly i uh, never thought i'd have a business with this guy uh but lo and behold here we have three four five different businesses together now he's uh, we've got a dental five, practice five successful ones five successful we, we, there's been businesses. seven seven in total I think. there's been a couple unsuccessful ones mm, in that's the mix okay. that's the way you do um it. but we've uh, we've built a couple dental practices together we have uh uh, built uh, Sleep Better Austin uh, together, mm -hmm. and uh, just just one of my best friends, and super proud of you, buddy, and and really glad that you're here to join us. Yeah, today. man, this Absolutely. is a neat deal. You got the nice uh, nice seating arrangements. Um, hanging out with a couple of Jack dudes. I mean, you know, is is that uh, is that too homoerotic or no, you know no, I mean? no? You know, like uh, I gotta be proud of. Uh, yeah. This is a fun deal. Well, yeah. I want to say so. How we would like to start every show. Obviously, you're thirsty. Welcome to Sleeping Around with Dr. Brandon. Oh, Brown. hey, there we yep. go. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, today we're going to sample some uh, Garrison Brothers. Uh, this is from High, Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good stuff, right? So tell me a little bit about the product pl placement that you have going on here. Well, right now we're just filling it up. Yeah. So yeah. normally when we'll have guests in, we'll do that. But um, Handsome Dan, by the way, is our engineer. Uh, he wanted to kind of fill it up with different things right now. Yeah, so we're just I kind like of it. testing out the camera angles. Yeah, Obviously, nice. I work for Sound Med, so I had samples in the back. Right. This and will not always be up front. And, and, yeah, and remember, we'll, sleeping around the podcast, this is, you know, this is where we talk about life. Yep. Yeah. We talk about music. We yep. talk about good, uh, good, fine 
wine and liqueurs. Nice. Yes. And and most of all, though, we we bring it back and we talk about sleep and we yeah. talk right. about the importance of sleep That's on right. the human body and on our health and you wellness. You know, last night I had some shitty sleep. Why? Well, if are we gonna ri- rewind it all the way? Please well, go mean, ahead yeah, and go, go for it. Go wherever we're, you want to go. Talking, with we're this. talking sleep. We're talking sleep. Yep. <clears throat> so I mean, if we go all the way back, um, I have an extremely narrow palate. Okay, right. so I just like I my airway is just a collapse. I think airway. I remember that from that one night in Vegas. Oh, I knew it was coming Starting that early. Way. That wasn't sleeping around. That was just goofing around. That was right? yeah. goofing around. <laughs> that's yes. goofing around with Brandon and Max. Yeah, that's uh, what. Uh, but listen, y'all did go to college together. Experimenting yeah, around. Yeah, you were in college, you know. <laughs> no, um, so you know I have a very narrow palate, and so my right. airway collapses pretty easily. And so around my thirties, I had sleep apnea. Mm-hmm. I got, it yeah. came about, you know, the way it's currently. Did you get, was this before you were in the world of sleep, actively uh, working? This is or? more me guessing this is when it started happening. Okay, guessing. Because I started. I you didn't started, get tested then. I didn't get tested okay. there. I didn't know that that was even an option at okay. the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I did get tested on was my testosterone. Testosterone just dropped, I mean, through the basement. I mean, it right. was like, I had the, yeah. I had a testosterone of a, like a 74 year old grandmother. I mean, yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, I was just asked out all the time. Right. Um, ended up getting tea, you know, doing a testosterone therapy and all that fun stuff. And once we started doing sleep, I tested myself. Well, I had mild sleep apnea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, go forward, you know, again, I need to. How long after the tea <clears throat> did you test yourself? Like, was this? We're like three years. So I was on testosterone therapy for about three years. Okay. And then um, once we started really moving in the practice, is when I tested myself with a watch pad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did more. Yeah. Did more. Yeah. And so I got, I tested myself mild sleep apnea. Well, I still had some crooked teeth, so I wanted to go ahead and, so I, I was treating myself with a device successfully. Got like it. Sleep, getting the best sleep I've gotten what since were you I was wearing? in my 20s. Um, are we, are we, we're talking about No, this? that's okay. Yeah, yeah, By the way, you don't have to look at me <laughs> twice. Yeah. All right, just so well, everybody knows that he looked at me twice. It definitely wasn't a somnomad. No. That's yeah. right. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Well, it was a prosomnus IA. Okay. okay. Um, it actually was a, Good at the advice. time, at the time they called it a hers. Because, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, it's the, now uh, a select. The select. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, well, it kind of falls in line with your low two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> ah, there he is. It, but I'm waiting for I, it. I told you I brought him for a reason. Well, it yeah, does explain sure. having the beard, yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, either way. It's okay. Um, so, so I was treating myself successfully with right. this device. I wanted to straighten my teeth. I kind of played around with trying to expand the palate with the new, you know, the... Devices that claim to expand palates right. um, yeah. that I don't really agree with, but I don't mm-hmm. know if that's this is what we're talking about. Hey, here. we can. It's, it's open. Uh, form, but, yeah. um, either way. So I tried to do that. So I stopped wearing my device, started getting shitty sleep again, and then decided to go ahead and straighten my teeth with uh, clear liner therapy. And so right. now I'm using a Z Quiet yep. to keep my, and I'm getting okay sleep. Just the temporary, uh, just the yeah. temporary yeah. thing yeah. over yeah. my, over the, because reta- uh, you're wearing the aligners. Uh, aligners, yeah, Day exactly. And night. Um, what, which number of liner are you on? Uh, this uh, out of twenty one, I'm on sixteen, so I'm almost done. Getting I'm close. doing weekly, yeah. Okay, right. getting close. Yeah. Um, Man, that but, seems like a lot of stuff in the mouth when you're trying to sleep. No, I'm being dead yeah. serious. So oh, it's a, it's, it's almost it's, so if you truly had an OSA, I would say, wow, how is well, he? Well, so you know, there's a there's a lot of studies recently. I don't know if this is too technical or not, but Love there's it. a lot of, there's a lot of st- studies right now that are claiming that. Increased OVD is actually very important, right? Yes. So we're mm-hmm. starting to see that. Well, for our listeners, OVD. Yeah. And for uh, handsome Dan. Increasing, increasing the the vertical distance between your top jaw and your lower jaw. So right. that's essentially, because that's giving the tongue. And handsome Dan's space. looking at porn, Come not open, paying attention. Open your okay. Your, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And so, so I, you know, when you put all this stuff in your mouth, it really does open up your OVD. Absolutely. Your, your, the vertical dimension there. Mm-hmm. Um, now, yeah. I heard, I heard that, I'm sorry, but I heard yeah, that. They have vibrating things that you can put around your Invisalign trays. I've heard that uh, your too. Your clear liners. Yes, and so I, so you, it's supposed to help. Yeah. Have you have you tried the vibrator uh, on it? Like have you taken I genies mean, out of the, the bedside I, I door? I use like an Oral B. You know? Okay. Yeah. So you and I love this. I, I love that. I'm going to actually bring this back to clinical. So I think so. My daughter went through the same thing, yeah. and I'm not being funny. So now she's 16. She started uh, just like my ex-wife with a very narrow. Ex-wife had all the way through myofacial reconstruction, chin implant. Mia, my daughter, started having issues at 13, the exact same thing. 
and she had low T. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, Hopefully. the exact same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the exact same okay. as Max's. Yeah, but it was interesting because they put the spacers in. Yeah, and we we had so many issues. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah, she went the CPAP route. Obviously, she yeah, and she could, loves it. Loves it. Yeah, and good. so but so it's interesting, point, right? You just you need we need people to sleep. Yeah, I, that's all I care about. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, so going back to that, where you had because I'm the one to ask the dumb question, all this stuff in the mouth. You're right. So OVD, it's helping actually the, yeah, the clinical. Yeah. So so there's not a whole lot of too much on my tongue right now. It is opening me up quite a bit, given the fact that there's layers of plastic in my mouth okay. that, that are opening me up. Right. Um, that being said, it's not. It, I'm not getting the protrusion enough that I feel like I need to get through my REM. Like I'll right. I'll drop in to right. uh, I'll go to sleep easily and stay asleep till about two thirty in the morning. Right then, about when my REM, REM starts yeah. up, then I'll just wake up and it's a struggle to get back to sleep because I'm not getting what I need out of that temporary device. Now, have you done any any testing with the uh, temporary device? Like, that, do, do that's what any, I was getting ready I mean, to say. Man, this yep. is this is anecdotal, kinda, dude. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, but hey, it's I, how I, you feel. It's subjective. Yeah, you know how you it's feel. It's totally subjective. I mean, I, I have the knowledge enough to kind of guess what's going on here, and sure. so that's that's where I'm at right now. So last night, going b bringing back to why I slept like shit is because at two thirty when I was like having these dreams about killing elk. Um, <laughs> hey, that's not, Max is an avid hunter. And yeah. by the way, I, I we're going to talk about that book that you just received that I've already read, the cookbook. And we'll, oh we'll yeah, talk the about hog that. book, man. Yeah. It's legit, hog, dude. It's the yeah, best. it's legit. And I was actually going to wear my hog book shirt. And then I'll tell today. you about. And then I'm going to tell you about two restaurants to go to called Couchons. One oh, in Lafayette. Yeah. One's in. Hold on. And then ones in New Orleans. Yes. They're, they're different. They're oh, all really? called Couchon. Okay. All yeah, Go nice. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I was going to Dreaming my, about elk. Yeah, I was dreaming about well, What's elk. funny is this this elk that I was chasing in my dream had uh, antlers like a, a, a moose. So mm. it was, it was, it was big. bizarre. Yeah, it was, bizarre. Like, it was a moose. It was, awesome. it was, awesome. it was like a moose. And did it have a red nose? Made it. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just kidding. Uh, Just kidding. Well, it had a red hole in it. So everything's done with it. But so, but either way, I woke up and I couldn't get back to sleep. And then I started thinking about business and yeah you know how that yeah that fucking goes that happens to me all the time <laughs> yeah so you go to bed every night fairly early really fucking early yeah i go I to bed too. at 8 30 yeah, yeah. It, because i well because my my witching hour is at 5 a.m me too Dude, i'm getting up and i'm gonna go bust my ass in the gym yep. five days a week me at too. 5 a.m yeah so at four i get up mm -hmm. and then i'll i'll meditate for a little bit i'll do so you wake up at four wake up 8 at 30 four. to four except with the z quiet it's 2 30 yeah, yeah. Most well, nights, I mean, every sometimes night. Sometimes I can sometimes. get back to okay. bed, but it was last night was a bitch. Yeah, I was so nervous about this podcast. You're nervous about being here. I'm sorry. Were you really? No. Yeah. Oh, I was about to say <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so Max, every year he goes on an elk hunt. Every Where? Year. Colorado, Wyoming, Wyoming Montana. Wyoming. Yeah. Uh, you, um, you, I'm goes. going to Idaho this year. Idaho, uh, New Mexico, yeah. Colorado, all the things. Yeah. I, I apply. It depends on where I pull attack. He mm -hmm. he's and this this is you know he plans this. It starts in January. He sends in the paperwork. I don't know the whole details, here, oh, yeah. but I just hear I'm going to be gone for a week at some point in time in the mm -hmm. fall. Yeah, right. And when I find Ten out days. when that is, I, I'll let you know. And I, I get really excited for this because I'm thinking he's going to come back. And I'm going to have meat in my freezer. Oh, elk has a lot of meat. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have meat in my freezer because he's very generous. <laughs> he's he always shares. <laughs> Out of the last dick. 10 years, guess how many times he actually killed something so that I could have meat in my freezer? Not many. He missed I mean, zero. It's, guys, it's hard. It's, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, no, no. no. <laughs> one. You killed one. Nah, not an elk. No, not he probably elk. killed well, a, I, I shot an elk and it, it, it ran away. It. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't go down. Uh, Brandon, I, I, I love you. We're really good friends. You don't understand. Part of the process of going elk hunting, and I'm not being sarcastic, is going elk hunting. Uh, my dad and I used to go to Greeley. Okay. And Colorado. To, yep. Yeah, and to sure. pull one, to see one, to get close enough to shoot one is amazing. But just being out there... Oh no! That, yeah. Okay. I, I understand. It's a challenging. <laughs> he endeavor. still wants to talk shit. You're still not missing it. No, it's <laughs> no, no, being no. there. It's not. It's, no, I, I get that, but I want meat in my freezer. Yeah. I can help you out with that. I get. I go. Like, I don't deer, want your meat in my freezer. <laughs> uh, is that, sorry, this, was that freezer a euphemism? Did he do now? that again? <laughs> yeah. So, so we go every time Max and I go right. to. Uh, well, not anymore so much because because we've we've advanced in our business world and right. our, our posture so to speak sure but sometimes just for fun still we, we may on occasion but when we travel together to a ce event or mm -hmm. anything like that we always 
I'm starting um, to get a, a picture of what the demographic that will enjoy this podcast well, you will know, be, it's actually, especially it's as you're going. It's going to be a story. it's going to be a very wide <laughs> demographic, exactly. Right? Like because I think people can appreciate how important sleep is. I agree. Uh, everybody sleeps, so you know we're we're looking for the demographic that sleeps, sure, or doesn't sleep. I was about to say, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so we're going for people who are alive and dead. I got you. Basically, yeah. yeah. That's what Brandon so, just said. I'll get back to that story in a minute. I, I'm, you've told us a little bit about your personal history here. Yeah, right. Sure. What's the difference for you when you are when you had your device, you're mm-hmm. successfully treating it, and and now you're the temporary device, or, or before you got the temporary device and you're not treating it? Man, you know, <clears throat> there's a couple of layers to this. The How first, severe was your apnea when you tested? Mild. It was uh, about 13. 13 AHI, AHI. So which, it was <clears throat> maybe yeah, I mean, moderate even. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, you know, it's... That's such a a snore. Uh, on occasion, okay. On occasion, um, what do you got there? Zen. What is that? Nicotine. Let me have some. Oh boy, we're doing this. So, yeah. so yeah, that, yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Six yeah. No, I've nicotine. been doing nicotine gum, which I appreciate. oh, I finally got off of it. So I dipped for twenty five years. Dude, I used to dip while I was seeing patients. Me too. Well, I wasn't seeing patients. Like I had a, I would have a mask on. Copenhagen. And- it, so so when I was dipping, what I would do is I would I would get so sick of myself Degenerates. doing this crap. Yeah, me Because I mean, I started when I was fifteen. I mean, so I, did I. I lived in Amarillo, Texas, man. Yeah. There, like, you, there's you can you can drive drunk, or you can use tobacco. That's basically what it is. Or fight, <laughs> or or have a girlfriend that you enjoy spending time with. This is kind yeah. of what it was in Amarillo, Texas. Yeah. Not all of Amarillo. I'm going to speak for Amarillo. Not everybody was like Dr. Max Kerr. You can find <laughs> yeah. him on five different companies with Brandon Hedge. Yeah. No, I'm messing. I'm messing. Um, so what I would do, or either way, what, what were we talking about? We were talking about dipping. Oh, dipping. no, no, no. So what I would do is I'd get sick of myself dipping. I'd try to quit. Right. And so I, I really enjoyed Copenhagen. Love Copenhagen. And then I'd, I'd work my way down to Skull Straight through various yep. various like. Oh, yeah. Flavor. Like, a, like, a weaning, cut, like you'd wean yourself I'd off. I'd wean myself like, to yeah. Skull Straight because the moment you open up Skull Straight, yep. you, when you taste it, when you smell it, you want to throw up. Yes, and so do. knowing that I was going to put that in my mouth, I would get six weeks after yep. I got six of, sick of that. Six weeks before I wanted another dip, which would start again back at Copenhagen. Look at you. Yeah. And so an I, algorithm it, of your it was a, you know, very, I'm cancer. a scientist <laughs> yeah, when it comes <laughs> down to it. Yeah, the and, so, and that's yeah. how he became a great dentist. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I would dip while I was seeing patients. But right. when I was 30, I, I ended up quitting. Good. Just most recently, I started doing Lucy, which yep. is a nicotine gum. Uh-huh. It's a five milligram of nicotine. No, well. Um, for clarity and mm-hmm. uh, it, you know, it's supposedly there's some neuro benefit. There's great of, neuro yeah, benefit. So yeah. how I got involved with Zen is Zen is one of the biggest sponsors. Any, of, anytime, anytime somebody who uses nicotine says it's a neuro benefit, I think you're just making excuses for your addiction. Oh, probably. Yeah, that, totally. That's it. I mean, but <laughs> totally. like, I, same reason hey, why we yeah. drink at 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> so, so <laughs> on a Friday. You better, when you're talking about your sex addi- addiction, <laughs> like what yeah. are the benefits that can come out of this? Well, you know, there's the calorie burning. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't even thinking about and, that. Uh, you know, uh, sex is better than violence. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There's love, a, not war. Love, not war. Yeah. And there's a lot of benefits. Man, you would have been a, a great debater. He's, a, you know, there's something that he's good at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I said that on the tea. So, anyways, so back. Zen yes. is one of the sponsors of this uh, festival. And so I used to do Nicorette yeah. gum uh, periodically, and I just got tired of doing it. I had more issues with my teeth and more issues. I never, you're, ch- you're chewing I never cut the whole once, time. And I go twice a year, get my teeth clean. I was begging for a dentist to say, stop dipping, man. I even did the test Yeah, uh, because I got to the point and I did it for so long that I always kept it in. And people are like, are you dipping right now? I go, yeah. When are you spitting? Yeah. So long story, even longer. I started the uh, Sober October Challenge. And oh, that was just recently then, huh? Three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. And I quit dipping during that time and uh, never went back. Yeah. And so I, I can remember going, man, I just always did it. Yeah. But I started young, just like you, 15, playing baseball. I thought totally. it was cool. Yeah. Oklahoma, yeah. Yeah. same yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, man. You know, we're, I won't describe your, it like you described it. Your dirt was Oklahoma, red, mine smelled like shit. Yeah, I was born in Texas. <laughs> okay. uh, lived here until I was not. My dad was Oldfield yeah. and uh, moved up to Oklahoma. And so, yeah, I spent, uh, what do they call it, your formative years up right, in yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. So very grateful. But my dad moved back down my junior year. Uh, my brother went to Gulf War. Mom finished up her Ph.D. at uh, OSU. 
And so right when I graduated high school, I went to go play baseball. My mom moved back to Houston with my dad. So I really never got to go back. Yeah. Does that make any yeah. sense? See, I'm trying to pull away from Oklahoma because I know where he's going with so this. Wait, what, going one with of that. the uh, a story about it. So I went to golf camp in Stillwater, Oklahoma, or OSU golf camp you bet. when I was younger. Eskimo you right? Joe's. Yeah, do what? You meet Ricky? This is before Ricky. Way, way yeah. before Ricky. You're a lot older than Ricky. <laughs> yeah, I am. We can um, talk about his heartbreak there, later. There Go was ahead. a guy, there was a guy there that we were, you know, as as a team, we were all watching MTV at the time cuz MTV actually had videos. Right? Oh, the yeah. best time. Um, Madonna was uh, one of the videos that right. came up <laughs> and some redneck from Oklahoma goes, "Madonna Madonna's what we call Tulsa backwards." It and is. I was like, "What?" Uh-huh. I had no fucking clue what he's talking about and I said, "What are you saying?" He goes, "A slut." That's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> No, that's right. <laughs> I'll remember that for the rest of my life. You know, I'm, I I look back on my he years. He said, that's right. That's yeah. right. So yeah. I look, she is. <laughs> so I look back at my years in Oklahoma so awesome because it led us to kind of where we are today. I like and it. First of all, sorry to, sorry okay. to go over the top of you yeah. here. How, so I think the, the meter is if we can get Handsome Dan to laugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then that, that, so is that the goal? <laughs> we had Handsome Dan in Stitches. Oh, nice. Last night. Well, we had Handsome Dan in very short shorts. Handsome Dan in short shorts. <laughs> and sleeveless shirt last night. Check out Beard Fit on Instagram. <laughs> That's right. Fit Beard. Yeah, fit, fit Beard. beard. <laughs> um, oh, you don't know if you'll get Beard <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Okay, yeah. so anyway, so it led us to kind of where we are today with the podcast. Um, I've been very fortunate in my life. I do not play an instrument. I cannot sing. But I grew up around just amazing musicians that are dear friends of mine today. And so part of our podcast. Um, red Dirt. Yep. Well, but uh, Mark Broussard is yeah. going to come in. He's not yep. Red Dirt at all. No. I've been fortunate enough to meet different musicians uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is when Brandon and I uh, met tell over. Tell Mark that I want to go duck hunting with him. You'll if you'll he, be able to tell. Oh, you're that. not. Are you not going? Uh, f- I probably won't be able to make it. If you can, let me know. Yeah, I'll try. So I so I love when, duck when this asshole travels. Yeah. Guess who's working? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rather have it any other way. Right. I, I don't blame. I you don't for that. travel that much. Shit, <laughs> Brandon, you're gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost done. Yeah. So man, you guys, you got like an old married couple, aren't they? They just argue, pick each other. No, so just real quick. So I think when Brandon and I got together and we started talking about kind of the vision of the podcast, um, like we said in the intro, it's about our passions, man. Um, Music, spirits, we'll call it spirits, and definitely sleep. And so um, I'm glad to have you on here. Um, Selfishly, I wanted to talk about the hog book mostly because this man and I probably share a lot in common. But also just your passion for sleep. Both you guys have excellent reputations with that. I appreciate that. Kind of Thanks seeing the uh, no, I'm telling you, I call on a lot of people in many different states, and they just don't have the same vision. So your passion for what we've just talked about already to the point is is awesome. That you just seem to be a passionate person. Is that fair to say? One hundred percent. Max is incredibly passionate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I and, uh, and and that's and that's part of what drives our companies forward is is mm-hmm. his passion and vision for. You know, I've, I've got a lot of vision for the business, but Max really, he's our integrator. He's, he takes right. it and pushes it and then puts it into pieces that make sense for everybody and, and make sure it happens ultimately. My strength is people. <clears throat> you know, I, I um, you know, there's a, there's a translation between Hedgecock and I. Hedgecock has <clears throat> the direction, and then I just make sure that the people, which are the engine of the business, all the pistons are firing. In, it's funny. I, I kind of feel that right now, even with the podcast, mm. like I'm being serious. Like he has this awesome vision and like, and I'll just call him and like, he's like, just go with it. Like yeah. if that he go with your okay. gut. He, and, he doesn't stop. Yeah. It, it's, it's so fun to be around. So and let's just keep roasting him. So, yeah, so no, anyway, no, no, so this, hold on. I got to say on. something. We started this morning and Brandon said, I thought he was talking about Max said that I asked if he worked out and did bicep curls this morning for the show. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, he came over here. I look at Max. I go, you came over and worked out. He goes, no, I didn't come over here and work out. <laughs> yeah, no. Brandon has a personal trainer. Uh, I do. All right. His name's Greg. All right. How is Greg? He's really cool. He's a new trainer. He's new to me. I've, I've only been working with him for about uh, four weeks. Okay. Very important in sleep to, to burn. There you go. Calories and be very aggressive in your work. Well, and we know I mean, it's not enough know, to just, but you're talking about an ex college athlete, always in shape. Um, and I'm, I'm giving you a compliment. Yeah. It's weird to, to that time to where, because I've done it too, where I go, I need somebody to help me 
And that's big of you because I know your personality. I mean, that's awesome. You know, it's interesting. I started working, um, you know, played college football, working out, always in the gym. You right. know, my, my whole, uh, uh, even after after college and through dental school and, and all that. And, you know, then then you do the family thing and you have mm-hmm. kids. And, and sometimes that slows down a little bit. Yep. And then you're kind of getting back into it. And then at some point in time, and this was for me about three years ago, um, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm just not making gains in the gym. Like my workouts just aren't fulfilling anymore. I'm kind of just going through the motions. Right. And, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just tired of the same old shit in the gym. I, I, I need some variety. I need somebody to push me. I need to, I need right. to get it on a schedule because I was getting busier and having mm-hmm. a hard time making myself go. Right. But, you know, if it's on the schedule, it happens. You know, so, so I schedule well, my workouts. Your personality, but yes. Yes, yeah. yes. I schedule my workouts. They're very structured. So I found this guy, and he's fantastic. His name's Barrett. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody who lives in Colorado might look him up. His name's uh, Barrett Smith. Is it Smith? I think it's Smith. Yeah. Well, you, you know, looking up a Smith in Colorado, yeah. Impactful. you'll find one. But anyways, <laughs> can you Barrett performance? Okay. B a r r e t, and uh, and he's what, got what, a, what a weird name. He had the name. Can you? And, and then and then yeah, I know that this is, is so awesome. cool. Right? Isn't that cool? <laughs> so it's kind of like Good a she man, man, K- K- Carmen. <laughs> what are you saying no no we talked about carbon we'll talk about carbon again later so anyways barrett starts working out with me and, and one of the things that we talked about was the neurologic benefits of working out and right. how to you know incorporate yeah, you're so, not a dick anymore not not you personally but in general you're you're yeah, not an asshole you're burning energy right. you're, you're you're it helps with anxiety depression totally. but sleep quality yep. so much better for people that are working out it's Absolutely. an important part of sleep and so Unfortunately, Barrett moves to Colorado and I lose my trainer. So, right. you know, I'm, I'm kind of roaming around lost for a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that same time, I start dealing with some back issues. And so I've got some some degenerative issues in my back. And, you know, I'm used to throwing weights around. I'm used to squatting and right. push pressing and deadlifts and all right. this kind of heavy weights and stuff like, well, not as heavy as max, but... You know, almost. You didn't weigh that much. Place. I'm guessing no. maybe one. <laughs> what do you no, say? No, in terms dude, of what I'm, he pushes? Oh, up. sorry, I'm, dude. I'm right. carrying yeah. a hefty two yeah. twenty five, brother. Yeah. Are you really? Oh yeah, man. Okay. I, like, you carry it well. Yeah. You so, I'm so dead. in the anyways, words of Rod Stewart, Greg. you wear it well. I, I find Greg, and the cool That's thing the about music. Greg Bring it is he he comes to my house, right? And one of the first things Greg asks me when he starts asking, so tell me about your routine, tell me about your diet, and what you do, and what your restrictions are, and all this because we're talking about my back, and then he says how do you sleep? Nice. And I said, I, I said, I think we're going to be friends, Greg. Right. Like, I think this might, this might work out. What do you mean? How do I sleep? He says, well, sleep's really important for recovery. It's important yep. for weight loss. It's important yep. for this. I said, you know about that, huh? And cause a lot of people don't know. They don't. Well, they gloss over and, it. They and he know says, deep down inside they know, but they don't want to believe it. So I said, well, let me tell you about sleep. And, and so of mm-hmm. course then I preach to Greg and Greg goes to get a sleep test and you preach. I, no. No. Yeah. So uh, Greg, so, Coming back though from from Greg to, I, I, to Max, I do have. So I I work with a dick doctor. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Is uh, that an official title? That's what he he goes by. Okay, when, cool. You're talking out. about Dr. Dick? No, I'm talking about um, uh, Dustin Fontenot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay. a PA, yeah. he's really good a friend dad. of mine. Him and I, um, we go fishing. We actually we fish the Devil's River. If y'all haven't, that 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 place is amazing. I have. Um, have you really? I have. Oh, dude, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, but either way, <clears throat> he was talking about a lot of these guys come in and they complain about having hard on, not not getting able to get up. Right. And and you know they're overweight mm-hmm. and. Uh, and uh, We've all been there, right? Mm-hmm. We've all been metabolically unfit. Yeah. Well, I was. <clears throat> but we started talking a little bit about Were this. Were you having trouble getting it up? Is that why you started well, seeing I mean, I, no. Actually, I never really had trouble. Tra- tra- so I had a it friend. Was, it was a you had a friend. Asking yeah, exactly. for a friend. Yeah. Asking for a friend. So either way. But, you know, I kind of came to this realization is, no, dude, you got to fucking earn a hard on. Right. You got to earn a hard on. You can't, you got to earn sex. You got to earn a hard on. You got to earn sleep. You got to earn a good body. You got to yeah. earn you that cheeseburger that you're going to fucking eat at lunch. I got you you. got to earn that shit. And it all starts with busting your ass in the gym. I agree. And that's it. Like, they, they, that's mm-hmm. almost it. The right thing. If you get in there and you sweat it out, you're going to have a hard on. Yep. You're going to sleep well. If you eat that cheeseburger, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. But you got to earn that shit. Yeah. You got to earn the girl. Earn you got to earn the, what, you like know, it. you got to earn it all. Well, dude. and I'll tell you, you, you know, it's not, you can't mail this shit in anymore. No, for what man. I do We're now, you'd humans, be surprised dude. at the urology uh, business that I, I'm getting now. Oh, it's and huge. Those call points. We, it's, we get a ton from it, urologists. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I can imagine, because I've been in sleep since 99, 
I can, I remember there, the call points were simple, right? But I love your uh, motto. Uh, we we kind of have a lot in common. I always say embrace the suck, right? Yes. I get up early just yep. like you. I have to. Do I always get that good sleep? Sometimes when I drink too much, full disclosure, yeah. I don't sleep that well. Yeah. But I think starting so we start up, early. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, seven, well, yeah, that way we can go to bed. It, that way enough. we can go to bed early. Yep. But I will say that it's interesting you say that because in you guys see it probably every single day. But people want to take a pill. They want to do yeah. the Dude, You got to earn to... mental health. Right. I so, mean, you, you, you got to earn this shit. Like it's not going to be given to you. We, we, we go back to the urology component and I like that. you know, the, the, um, the, what is it? Cialis, Viagra, the, the blue pill, you mm -hmm. know, all this kind of stuff. And so they, they've got studies with erectile dysfunction. Absolutely. And they've got studies with, uh, the comorbidity, comorbidity of sleep apnea and erectile dysfunction. They see a correlation there. And then they went even further and they did studies with a control group where they gave men with erectile dysfunction uh, the pill. And sugar pill. Yeah. And, and then they had the other people who had the sugar pill. Placebo. Mm -hmm. And then the other people, all of them had sleep apnea, got mm -hmm. a CPAP and mm -hmm. no pill. Okay. Okay. So the CPAP group had a better response than any of the other groups wow. in terms of treating the erectile Dude, dysfunction. <clears throat> we have, yeah. There is a primal yeah. blueprint and it's not that fucking hard. You eat well, you sleep well, yep. you move hard, yep. and and then you love well, yep. and you're gonna be well. You I breathe like well. You're gonna again, yep. and that's how you earn it. I agree. <clears throat> it's not. It's not fucking rocket science. No, and it's tough when as we get older. You know, people ask. Totally. Me, well, you made a joke we, about, but we got shit to do. Yeah, I mean, I just have to. Handsome Dan, can I ask a favor? Can we get some more ice for our guest and for oh, us, hey. please? Thank that's you. Right. Here Thank we go. you. And hey, please take off going. your shirt when you come <laughs> to the camera. Um, Dude, we're talking about getting in shape, and he's over there with a six pack. Too many Christmas. How old is he? Uh, he so was born when I graduated he, high school. Yeah, he was so born in 1992. I hate to throw that card out. No, there. I, I didn't look like that when I was done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dude's he, in shape. He's in. He's in very good shape. Yeah. Well, uh, can and we he, bring it back to how much I, I left? <laughs> we so Max, about it Max can squat. <laughs> yeah. Max can squat. So Max, one time, one time, Max said to me, "Great name to have it, by the way, Max." Totally Max. 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 Oh, oh guys, I'm sorry. That's, Boy, all right, you have to dance. Oh, dude, you have to dance a, now. You have to rookie move. You have to dance now Thanks, that you Dan. shirt was supposed to be off. Handsome, handsome oh, Dan. I need some. His, uh, his shoes are off. We so all need some he's teasing from the from the ground up. <laughs> yeah, put that. Put your hiney towards the camera. We need viewership. <laughs> all right. So, when, so one on. time, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, so, handsome thank Dan. You. Thank so you. So one handsome. time, Max says to me, he says, "Hey, he's been working out. He's Max used to do the CrossFit thing, and so he was Mister like, oh, Mister CrossFit. Oh, don't give me super. No, it's good. I mean, I still." He's, he's working. Just he's moving. I'm not Mister. Then he says, "I'm going to do this uh, uh, power lifting. I'm going to do snatches." Mm -hmm. Yep. And I said, "I love snatch." <laughs> so, we can, <laughs> see what he did there. So, so he said, "I'm going to do snatch. I'm going to do the, the clean and jerk. Clean and jerk." And uh, you don't love that. And I'm also, uh, yeah, I also love jerks. <laughs> there you go. And so, I said, "That's awesome, man." And so he's, he gets really into it. And the thing about Max, he goes through phases. He wow. he goes through phases in life where he is all in on whatever he is doing. And, and and I can tell already. All in, okay. Yeah. So perfect name for for, for however long he is, Mister Power Lifter. Mm -hmm. And then he says, "I'm." Well, it's Olympic weightlifting. Olympic weightlifting. Yeah. Sorry, no. uh, yeah, not bodybuilding. No, no. yeah. And uh, we got a coach, Mister Strong Guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nope, not so, Mister Strongman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he says, <laughs> he's just, he's so he says, "I'm all. entering a uh, recital." No, <laughs> not at all. A meat, <laughs> sir. A meat. A meat. A track yeah. meat. No. <laughs> a lifting meat. Yes. yes. A Olympic lifting Correct. meat. Right. I said, it's awesome, man. C good luck. He gets a singlet. He's got the, the, yeah. the leotard on. To, yeah. And he goes and he comes back. And I said, hey, man, how'd you do? He goes, yeah, man, I got third in my weight class. <laughs> I said, that is fucking awesome, dude. Congratulations. He goes, Age he, he goes there was yep. eh, there was only four people. <laughs> yeah, hey. exactly. Hey, dude. What I got I got on a platform in front of a bunch Thank of people you. I yep. didn't know, and I made my lifts. Yep. I didn't push it as far as I probably could have or needed right. to because yeah. I made all my lifts. But either way, yeah. listen, man. I mean, we're not all Ricky Bobby, you know, <laughs> first, first laugh. Yeah, sure. But you know, the fact that you got up on that podium in yeah. that singlet, yeah. uh, exactly. first of all, that too. I, I put a sock so, <laughs> so who wouldn't so 
Well, you handsome know, Dan we, wouldn't have. We know a little bit. <laughs> we, we know a little bit about your personal history with sleep, and, and you've kind of shared, right. uh, you, you know, kind of the the story of getting tested and. I like um, how he's bringing it back. Getting treated and, and that kind of thing, but he's the you've also had this professional switch. Yeah, uh, you, I, you were trained as a dentist. We went to dental school together. You worked in pediatrics. We built a dental practice together. Um, what was that professional transition like for you? Well, not I the mean, personal transition, <clears throat> the professional right. transition. Well, I mean, into realizing the, that I was the rate limiting step to my business was everything. Love right. that. Knowing, Love knowing that. that I was the only one that was preventing our growth. It was the most impactful thing. And so Love what that. I ended up having to do is I had to start building myself to build the business that I wanted. So if I needed to be a multimillionaire or multimillion dollar business, yep. then I needed to become a multimillion dollar leader. I love um, it. And so just a lot of personal growth, a whole, a whole shit, a shitload of books. Yeah. <clears throat> Last year I, w- I read a book a week and it just kept on going to where, you know, I would go to uh, seminar after seminar mm-hmm. after seminar until like I ascended to a level that the business had to catch up with me. I love um, that. And now we're kind of, we're, we're in this place where you and I are now feeding off of each other. Um, and now we, you know, I, I also extend my friend group towards the people that I want to become. Um, not so yeah. much, you know, surround so, yourself. so surround yourself, you know, again, th- these, these are, these are common mm-hmm. principles that are so difficult to put into play, right. but <clears throat> you know, we sink to the level of the, our environment I agree. Uh, or we write or we, yeah. we rise to it. And I so agree. it was always intentional based upon what I wanted my goals to become within my life. And you know, that's where you and I <clears throat> get along so well. It's like, dude, we got this meat suit for 85 years tops. Yep. Maybe, may, if we're lucky, a little bit more. Agreed. But, man, I'm going to squeeze every freaking ounce of, of juice out of this lemon that I possibly can, and that means I need to show the fuck up. Yep. Now, <clears throat> the problem with that is that I'm constantly judging myself on whether or not I'm doing what I need to be doing in order to do what I want to do. Is that a bad thing? Uh, you know, t- at times it provides uh, yeah, maybe there's useful stress and, and non-useful stress, so I think sometimes it burgeons on the non-useful, but right. <clears throat> but there is that 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 pull there that well it's always important to reflect i mean you've got to be able to reflect on well you got to give yourself a heads up you got to give yourself a high five here and there you got to appreciate where you currently are but also know where it's not going to stop you from where you're going i think that the common thread with us three and probably y'all's friendship and and brandon and i's recent friendship is that i mean i think if you're constantly challenging yourself you want to surround yourself with people who are constantly doing the same thing I know for me, uh, being in sales since 2005, and that wasn't my calling, but I always tried to find books, tried to find to get myself not above my competition, above my competition, like to constantly challenge. And so one of the things that I noticed about y'all's business from my uh, perspective, uh, recently getting into that dental side, uh, recently visited uh, one of y'all's offices, the Strictly Sleep, and I loved it. Yeah. And I think that there's a Jefferson location. Yeah. Yeah. There's maybe a handful of these that I call on in seven States guys that y'all have made such a commitment outside of drilling and filling is what we common people call totally. it, that you're, you're making that commitment to sleep. And it, it says a lot about the vision and it says a lot about the practice. And so to me, putting that out in the forefront is visionary. And I think it's going to be the norm. Uh, moving forward with the, you know, we just came off COVID. Uh, Phillips just had that huge recall, but y'all were kind of, um, and this is my question, I guess, to both you guys, it's almost like you guys saw that coming. Like this will be the future of sleep apnea. Yeah. We're uh, treating. about, we're about a four, four years in front of the pack. Right well, now. I think, yeah. It's, and, and just so we're clear, I don't mind throwing in a shameless plug. No, please. Matthew's talking about Sleep Better Austin. Yep. Uh, that's our business here in Austin. We yep. are four locations. We have four locations yep. in Austin, and and basically, uh, we provide the oral appliance therapy. This is for patients. It's it's the alternative to CPAP therapy. Right. We yep. all know we'll we'll talk a lot about CPAP and we will and how beneficial it is, but also how poor the compliance is with it. Right, and, and we have already with my daughter. Many right? many right. patients. Your daughter's a compliant patient. Right. The forty percent. She's, she's the forty percent. You 30. got six thirty percent. At five at five years. It drops down to seventeen point eight. Yeah, and so after yeah, after five years, we have eighteen percent of people given mm-hmm. a CPAP or wearing it every night mm-hmm. or four nights a week, even, yep. uh, which is yeah. a, a ridiculous standard. And so four, four hours, four hours, four yeah. nights a week. It's five. a ridiculous standard. Yeah, four nights a week. Yeah. And and so we know that 
people, the, the amount of people that are diagnosed versus the amount of people that are treated for sleep apnea is incredibly low right. because CPAP compliance is so poor. Right. And there's problems with this, and we'll, we'll get into that. But um, I think what we saw as we were building our dental practices, and I love the dentistry that I do still. Max is not as like thrilled with the clinical aspect of general dentistry. Right. I like the relationship building, so you said that right. But, but the relationship yeah. building, you know. Um, but but what we saw was this ability to have a bigger impact, right. you know, well, we're on people's lives. Yeah, and, and that, that's, that's what really it comes cool back down to, yeah. right? Like, so in all this growth, this personal growth, you know, I think that there's the the new millionaire, which was thrown around probably you know two years ago, is not the the person that has a million dollars in the kitty. That's right. It's the person that has impacted a million lives. That's right. And and, and that's it, it, you kind of it's like build it and they will come type situation. Planting seeds. <clears throat> yeah. So let's let's impact as many lives as we possibly can, and we know the money's going to come. Right. Yeah, and, and so that's where we went, and we saw this opportunity to have a bigger impact on people's lives. We saw this Scalable. opportunity to scale easier. You know, we went from one to four locations in, in four years wow. for Sleep Better Austin that's, versus going from, that's you know, in, in eight years, going from one to three locations for a dental office. And, and, and also the, the headaches and the overhead with running a dental practice versus running a sleep business. Um, and, and so that's really the direction that and, we and the kind lack of, of clarity decided to go. You know, I think, I think one thing it's, that's beautiful about sleep is like, Hey, we're here for one thing. Yep. We want you to sleep better so you can have a better life. Love it. Yep. You know, in dentistry so often it's, <clears throat> it's like, well, you know, we don't want you to be in pain. Right. That, that's the main driver for, for dentistry. People want to keep for their most teeth. Dentistry. Yeah. For people want to, for most dentistry, 80% yeah. of the dentistry, yeah. people want to keep their teeth. Yep. And they don't want to be in pain. And then 20% of the time is replacing the teeth that are gone, right? Mm -hmm. Or making the teeth a little bit nicer mm -hmm. um, so people can be proud of themselves, which is, I think, is all noble. Um, but there's so many ins and outs to that business, and there's so much backstory that we're trying to fight against with that. Uh, and, it, you know, technically we're just mechanics as, as a dentist, you know, we're trying to prevent problems and fix problems. Right. Um, tooth mechanics. It, from, yeah. Tooth mechanics and, and which, and we're very skilled in doing yep. so <clears throat> and we're amazing at it. But with sleep, it's like, Hey, we can give you your life back by getting you back to how you should normally be. Um, and, and I think and that, that's what's beautiful about sleep. And it's that singular purpose that right. drives us forward. And I would say for our viewership and people who don't know, just like me, I was in sleep for all those years and then uh, transferred over to more of a dental focus in my career. And you would be surprised, guys. I but, mean, but it's dental, so different. Not dentistry, dental, dental no, sleep, medicine. dental sleep. But you would okay. be surprised that they just dabble and they mm -hmm. don't have passion for it. What drives me what you just said is to surround, to surround yourself with these kind of people that are drive that, that do this. There's not a lot of you guys out there. So I think for our viewership, knowing first of all, that there are dentists out there who focus on sleep. And I know they're bored. They're called diplomates, right? Yeah. yeah which but, is a weird word. And it is. Yeah, I, I know. I, I said, a uh, diplomat, they're like diplomat. <laughs> yeah. But me kind of diving into that, that's how I met Brandon. And it, it's interesting because that is the future. So you were talking about you guys, I think you even you're four years ahead. Um, it, it's just a compassionate, it's passionate, but also it's treating these, these patients that otherwise just thought they had to be hooked up to a blower, which yeah. again, I think it does work. Um, oh, so does, I definitely see the future. Just people don't want to wear it. Well, yeah. but let's go back to that. Why? And now you're a coach. We're both coach. We, we consult, we coach with right. the International Academy of Sleep. And right. we work with dentists around the country. Another great, great on, on, on trying to help uh, dentists uh, better implement this, better build their sleep business, better um, help more patients, have bigger impact. And so now you coach with them as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you see, you talk to dentists. Why, why is it that dentists just dabble? Man, it's that clarity of purpose. You know, so often when we get into the fight, we worry about the person in front of us as opposed to the direction of the war. Wow. Right? And, yeah. and so, so like I'm too busy with these skirmishes that maybe are not adding to the purpose of my life. Right. And so I'm focused on that. And so I always have to get some of my coaching clients back to what the, what do you fucking want to do? Right. Like, are, what, like, what is the purpose here? Like, what right. do you want? Cause, cause then you can start kind of going away from 
<clears throat> the putting out the fires and focus on the big things and know that the fires are going to get taken care of at some point in time. You know, one of the things that I appreciate working with you is that when I get into that mindset and that mode, you, you say, traditionally you have just said one thing. You say, Max, don't focus on the tree, focus on the path through the tree. Mm -hmm. um, no, I like you know, that. And, and tell me, tell, tell, well, kind of, Max you don't is a mind, really, you wouldn't think it for 235 pounds. 25. 225 I thought you said 245. Yeah. <laughs> the camera adds, hey, the okay, camera adds so 20 pounds. We're gonna, hey, okay. So I'm I'm deadlifting 465 right now, and I'm squatting 410. Yeah. So And I'm cleaning yeah. uh, 275, cleaning and jerking 275, and I'm yes. throwing, um, I'm snatching about 205 right now. So, That's pretty good, man. Yeah. So, pretty good. So, really so good. the, the weight, really there's, there's purpose to the weight. Yes. But either way. The weight is important. So, But yeah. either way, he's incredibly nimble. On his feet, <laughs> yeah. especially oh, okay. with skis on. Well, let's hear it. He's he's a heck of a skier. A snow skier. Snow skier. Okay. Yeah, he's a heck of a skier, and and so, you know, one of the things when you ski trees, and I snowboard, and mm -hmm. and love it, and I'm just, I mean, I am an outdoor junkie. I mean, you put me out there, you hike, you ski, you snowboard, right. you on the lake, on the water, surfing, you name it. I love to do it. Right. But one of the things when you ski trees and they're tight. Mm -hmm. You can't, like, they, they always say, well, how do you make sure you don't hit the trees? You don't want to be a Sonny Bono. You do, exactly. you do not want to be a Sonny no. Bono. Right. So how I do mean, you make Being sure married to Cher for a little while would have been cool. That would be cool. Hey, yeah. so was Greg Allman to bring it back to the, to the, the music, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, the man. The Tied to a whipping <laughs> post. <laughs> Keep going. But Fine. so you can't look at the trees is the point. Like, right. if you look at the trees, you hit the trees. You go where you're looking. So you right. look at the space between the trees. You, you aim, you focus on the path, not the obstacle. All right. So, and, and in business, you have to do that. Too. I agree. So, path. check him out at his business. So, when you go to the bathroom, Brandon, focus on. <laughs> yeah. Don't you were focus just on the lid. About all the piss on yeah. The don't focus on the lid. Focus. Sorry. So, yeah. to a little behind the scenes, uh, Matt. You were Matthew. Right, yeah, Matt, he doesn't okay. like. You he doesn't like Matt. Oh, really? I like Matt. <clears throat> uh, Matthew was. Complaining. But only my friends call me that. Call me Matthew. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <Sorry>. Matthew <laughs> was complaining to Hedgecock about the fact that there was piss all over his seat. There was. Earlier today. There was urine on the seat. The bathroom it was, was disgusting. Your, it was your urine. But that's not the point. I don't think that was. Is that the point? Use that bathroom. <laughs> Oh, I love it that you blamed him uh, for your piss. Isn't that great? <laughs> he went in there. Yeah, that's the way we do it. Yeah, and it's, and now and now you no just wonder he, you're you're a bachelor, right? I love it. I, I, I love am. It. It's I like am it's a, when, it's when the lab blames the dentist for the shit. I'm work. telling you. Hold on, Brandon Brett, just threw it out there. I am a bachelor, and so is handsome Dan. If and speaking of fit beard, yeah. So, beard fit. No, I think uh, I'm going to take it back because this is what beard. I do. Oh, okay. I like to. I call it my chicken exit to be funny and stuff. And, and y'all take a compliment, please. Uh, I've also seen the fruits of what you guys do because I call on people that have been coached by you guys. And I don't want to say names, different areas of different states and stuff. And it's, it's awesome. And it's just getting that initial push. And what I find that Brandon does very well, I don't know you all that well, Max, is he's that motivator. Um, there's a certain uh, dentist that I'm talking about, Brandon knows who, and it's just if she would get out of her own way, she would be – Huge, yeah, huge, and continually seeing her grow just since I've been calling on her has been pretty awesome. So I, so I, I, see, I have a guy like fruits. that, and I hope he sees this. His gonna... name is Matt, and he knows that I know that he can be amazing if he gets out of his own damn way. There you go. But yeah, I'll have to I'll have to talk to him. I have to make him watch this. Yeah, we have to make him watch this so that yeah. he can see that we talked about him. In a yeah, very, and in take a very a, positive in a very way because I think he has the he has the chops. And take a compliment, right? But, you're well, about to I, you're I about to say that. it's all about her. Well, and she's all no, you she is. But I think that I've seen the growth. Um, they're in the her ones business in the I, I appreciate that, and I think you know. So I think that people, we go back to the people that dabble. Everybody says the dentists we work with, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of dentists say it's becoming more and more well known that this is something that you can do to impact people's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a cool part of dentistry and it's a, and it's additional revenue for your business too. There you go. But it's a, it's a complicated process. 
you the, got it's, it's a mountain. it's a it's a, yeah, a medical community where dentists were not used to dealing with medical insurance. Mm-hmm. We have the physicians that you have to interact with and Trust work with me. because this is a medical <laughs> disorder. So you know we yeah. can't diagnose sleep apnea as dentists, right. um, even though we're really knowledgeable about. It. We can't even order a test right. as as a dentist. And home so, sleep test. A home sleep test. So we're working with these physicians. What are what are the obstacles that that you've seen or there you go with with the physicians that you meet with you work with I know I mean we have some great physicians mm-hmm. that we work with I yes, mean there are, there are physicians in Austin that know mm-hmm. understand mm-hmm. Um, they they attack it they see the patients that need it they screen the patients they get them in and they get them treated and they follow up with them but I think that's like the ten percent I think so many physicians if. If that, I think so many physicians are missing this. Well, they're missing the boat. I, you know, I got to blame our own. I got to, you know, <laughs> seek first to blame yourself and then everybody else. I, yeah. I, I honestly think it's. Man, I love that quote by it, Vince Neil. <laughs> yeah. Is that a Vince Neil quote? No. I'm just I thought it was, uh, what is it? Van Halen. Wait, Van Hagar, not. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, that's not Vince Neil. Never mind. Yeah. Um, no, I think. Uh, Listen, you're not a good listener because I even said, let's play it back. Vince Neil and Motley Crue. Yeah, my that's my bad. Um, I, hair, my hair. hair I, I I miss the hair band. I love the old school country. Miss the hair. Matthew band. doesn't have hair. And then I got and then I got oh, into I got into like the jam band shit. So if we're gonna, I go can back tell by your shirt a little yeah, bit. I thought sure. I was gonna. Yeah. Um, Max is either. a Max is a spread head. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so so if we're gonna go, back how many wife panic shows have you seen, Max? Between my wife and I, if we're counting the both of us, we've probably done. Th- 300 now how many yeah, have you seen without her probably close to 299 I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, maybe close to the 156 range somewhere okay so 150 without her and 150 with her no no no, no. that's she's probably done 150 as well and okay so, you know we've so if you, a lot of them we've seen together okay so, yeah. yeah um but uh the, you know that's just uh, one time i'll just we'll get back to this yeah but no i agree with you let's i want to dive into this it's shit, amazing brother. Max will talk to anybody, and I I know you you guys probably don't. We never s- met till today. Well, I, I understand that, yeah. and, but and you probably don't see this in me because I, I obviously I'm so good at talking. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're um, a fucking wizard, and I, I and you love giving yourself compliments. <laughs> and so I go talk ahead. to people all the no, time. Keep going, and I and and I and I speak on stage, and I lecture, and I consult. And, you know, all these. And you're things handsome, and, and you're so, yeah, we got yeah, all these things, and it just it is what it is. Uh, the cur- the the cross I bear, so to speak. <laughs> Um, Mark chapter six. And, <laughs> and so, Matthew. but I'm, I am the quiet guy. I do not, when, when we go to a party, uh, I don't go to a lot of parties, but when I do go to a party, I do enjoy a party on occasion. Yeah. We can talk about dental school later. I'm the guy that kind of just goes to the corner, mm-hmm. finds the one or two people I know, right. chats with them, babysits my beer, mm-hmm. kind of just hangs out and yeah, and spend an hour or so, and then I'm kind of like, ah, yeah, I'm ready to go. You know, it's you know, kind of go. Max is the guy that goes to the party, mm-hmm. and by the end of the night, he knows everybody's story. He goes, he mingles, he talks. He's, hey, how's it going? Where are you from? Do that. Like he is Mister Mister, like kinda know social the butterfly. Right, guy I kind of know the feel at the party. I mean, you you guys are very similar in that, and in, in your sales background, obviously, that's why you're good at what you do. <laughs> um, so going back to widespread panic. It's amazing the people you'll meet at a panic. Concert. Absolutely. And and one time Max and I say we're gonna go skiing in Lake Tahoe. Mm-hmm. And I say okay, let's go skiing in Lake Tahoe. And uh, it, no matter where we go, uh, he's part of a forum. He lets th- them know he's going ahead of time. There's a forum. There's this. There's no, that. He's part of the. Gr- so we land group. somewhere, and and Max always knows somewhere that he can go get supplies. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> supplies. Got so. You. We have that, but then we go to we go to Tahoe. We fly into Reno, mm-hmm. and I say we need to rent a car or anything. Max goes, "No, I got a buddy here. Yep, he's gonna lend us his car." Wow! I said, "No shit, we're gonna." He's just gonna lend us his car. It must be a really good friend, right? Turns out we go to the guy. The guy picks us up in a suburban, which right. we fucking I, uh, crashed. Uh, well, no, I just ran into the we ran into a parking garage, the top of the <laughs> yeah. suburban. Well, like, I didn't. I didn't. The, the, account the, for this. Yeah, the thing on top. Yeah, yeah altitude gets yeah. you uh, that. So the guy mind. picks us up in a suburban. We go to his house. Ex- expedition. We expedition. Whatever it is, it's a large vehicle. Yes. We hang out, and so then I hear the story. It turns out Max only met this guy once. Yeah, met him once What's at wrong a with panic that? concert. What's wrong with that? Well, turns so, out the guy. 
Is he registered sex offender? No, what's the, the button the button on his pants broke, and so his pants kept on falling down in the in the show. So and so I just gave him my belt. Well, here's what happened first. The guy, and you guys are all over. Speaking of widespread, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna bring it back in for a second. Okay, so Max knows this guy. Y'all pick up the expedition. Yeah. Pick up the expedition. Well, I know him because of the panic show. Right. But turns out they're at a panic show. The guy's button breaks on his pants, and right. his pants are falling down. Right. His wife <laughs> starts trying to fix the pants. Okay. So she so is she's on level. her knees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Trying to fix the pants. I was right. like, oh, so, so it's Max that kind is, of party. Max is standing there going, whoa, <laughs> whoa, that whoa. kind of party. Yeah. She, and she's, oh, no, the button. Right. And Ma- oh, and so Max, being the generous guy that he is. He got on his knees. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought. No. Okay. Yeah, well, that was later that later. night. Exactly. <laughs> oh, both y'all said it the same he, he takes off his belt. Yeah. And he says, here, man, you can use my belt. Right. So now we have a guy lending us his truck. For a belt. In Reno. Uh, two years later, yeah. for a belt, Chuck, for a belt, Chuck, 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 Chuck the belt. Yeah. So, so, I, a, I, like, so, so, so we, we that, that was a that was a very tangential. To very tangential. What, what is the problem? There's problems in the industry, and and what the the physician? What are issue? the options? Yeah, and the like physicians. I said, I, you know, dentists have this way of, you know, it happened in the cosmetic boom. It, it, where all of a sudden dentists just want to go hard after something that they feel like they can make money on. Absolutely. Now, I think that there's also there's also very sober and noble goals behind it, but what it seems to the common public, as including physicians, that it's a money grab. Right. And and, and I think that I think what had happened is over the '90s and over the early 2000s when sleep became a vogue in vogue topic. Very big. We had a lot of fly-by-nighters who were mm-hmm. going in there. Right. They were treating people with a one-visit mm-hmm. uh, appliance saying, hey, this is going to fix your sleep apnea. Right. And these patients are no longer beholden to the dentist after we deliver the d- device. Right. Now they have to go back to the physician. The physician is saying that there's tremendous bite change, which mm-hmm. luckily we don't see that quite as often, thanks to Somnomed and the, the newer technologies. But also there's no effing follow up anymore. Right. Yeah. Like there's there's like we're not even seeing if we've actually treated these individuals. Right. So, we're so not there's no titration, there's right. no moving the jaw forward or back, there's no there's no follow up care to any sort of the side effects that could come arise. Because right. any sort of like any sort of physical intervention on a human body there will always be blowback and we don't always know what that is now a dentist just have been taught in a way hey just give them this device it's going to cure their sleep apnea but that's true in medicine too oh 100 percent, 100 percent. because we haven't done the framing in dentistry well and 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 like you guys have been balls deep into sleep dentistry for a while for someone who just came i just celebrated one year with my current company right and I think my sleep background, you you guys nailed it. And I actually talked to Brandon. I think I hadn't been in the industry very long. And that's what I found is that there's this divide, this pissing contest between the, the physician and the dentist. And you look a is, little bit deeper. These physicians are a little bit upset. There you go. That they are now, they're, they're the lackeys of the insurance, insurance companies. Insurance there companies. You go. They don't like it. They don't like being pencil jockeys either. They right. Doctors want a doctor. Doctors always want a doctor, Absolutely. including dentists. Yep. And sometimes they feel hamstrung and then they're blaming dentists because man, that you know, for, I hate to say it, but we got a better gig, man. Right. You know, we work with our hands. Right. Why this is why a lot of physicians want to do some degree of surgery. They like working with their hands. Right. They they also see that we're working sometimes four days a week. We have a very set schedule and we have nice reimbursements. So right. so inherently there's this divide between I agree. man i don't appreciate what you're doing because it's not quite as hard as what we do which 100%. i 100 percent agree right like the the bearing of load that the physician takes is massive right. and they're getting they're getting messaging from and, and they're so getting many different hammered ways, by the insurance companies. getting hammered by insurance companies and so uh, there's going to be animosity there because there's a there's a there's a differential between lifestyle right there's some they're, they're seeing us and they're seeing that we're enjoying our life and they're they're just feeling like they're just and, and those fly by night the, i'll use and then the, dentist, the fly by night dentists we're come charging in here, these patients ridiculous stupid amount. amounts and i can remember we're when trying I, to play their game right. without actually playing so their game and that's effed up i worked for phillips full disclosure yeah. and i can remember when 
uh, the Narval got launched from our biggest competitor, ResMed. And the little bit of attention, attention that they gave that is the reason it's not no longer in North America or 48. It's almost like they disregarded it as the sales team for OSA. Right. And the, the dental side. I mean, they literally, it, it just disappeared as, one As day. opposed to a appropriate treatment. I mean, yeah. I, can you imagine, like, in any job that you have, here's a product that you are asked to promote, and it just didn't seem to take off. But I will tell you that the tide has changed with at least what I'm seeing in Austin. I'll speak just for you guys. That the, y'all do have those relationships. Yeah. I call but on dirt guys. You, you would cultivated. be You would be surprised. Yeah. It's still going back to... 1999, early 2000s, where they just don't even want to hear well, about it. Well, so the, do you think, and you mentioned a couple things there, Max, is, is you mentioned that, first of all, maybe there's some some bad apples in the dental field that 100%. have created uh, maybe some, some bad will mm-hmm. and, and maybe a bad name or a bad rep for uh, what dentists are doing for sleep apnea. You also mentioned the insurance companies do. Mm-hmm. I mean, which one do you think is the greater play, do you think? Because there's also, you, you know, well, the average let's, time. Let's look at the reimbursement situation here. Why in the hell would any of the major payers choose to go to a more expensive yep. uh, treatment prior to a more conservative treatment? And this is the rule in, nope, all in, over. in medicine and, in general. And what would be the like, more expensive treatment be? Well, I mean, if we're really talking about it, yeah. it's like, well, maybe not Inspire, but surgery. Uh, inspire surgery is pretty expensive. I mean, if, yeah, and so, so we're starting to see a, a higher push for the more in-depth, intense treatments when I don't understand why we can't walk our way towards Heck, look at Respiracardia. You know, Zoll just bought Respiracardia, but that's a, a, a surgery. Because like, it's a, it's a, there's a degree of this that's some money. Well, right? it's interesting. I was on this, uh, this uh, science panel uh, mm-hmm. that you invited me to participate yep. in, and, and yep. I was listening in. We had doctors from around the country, physicians, mm-hmm. pulmonologists, sleep physicians from around the country, and there, was, only, yep. there was two dentists on the panel. There yep. was uh, Viviano up in Toronto, and then and there you. was Dr. No, Dr. Patel from, oh, uh, yeah. I can't remember where, but anyways, these physicians started talking, and, and one of the discussions uh, revolved around oral appliance therapy. Mm-hmm. And the conception or the misconception is is that these are just really expensive yep. and they don't work. Uh, yet we have paper after paper, data after data. We point. have more clinical data for oral devices than we do. I mean, it, it's out there. Yeah, well, it's well, and even and, and even in Especially terms of more than inspire and and in terms of outcomes, we for sure. And so one of the one of the doctors, the physicians on the group, it was really interesting to me that he was pushing this inspire therapy, this inspire treatment, which yep. is. Pretty effective. We're looking at 72, 73% success. But Absolutely. But there's, there's a narrow window yep. of patients that are eligible for this procedure. Mm-hmm. And he was saying, you know, I, I just think that these dentists, they charge so much for these devices. They're right. so expensive. You know, maybe instead of uh, just paying for these devices, we should force the dentist to have uh, patients wear a temporary device, yep. like a Z-Quiet or something like that, mm-hmm. before they go into therapy. Well, what do we know about temporary devices? We know that they're not as customizable. They're Absolutely. not as titratable. Boil and bite they're is the Boil and bite. Here. They're yep. not as effective. They're more cumbersome. They're less comfortable. Yep. Higher they're rate of side effects. Higher rate of side effects. We know that they're just, and they're not, compliance is lower, 100%. and they're not as effective. So mm-hmm. they're not a great tool. You know, if, if a patient says, oh, I wore that boil and bite, and it worked really well for me, then I can say with pretty high certainty that a custom device will work for you as well. 100%. But if you wear a boil and bite and you say, no, I couldn't wear it, there's no indicator that you're, that the customized device isn't going to work for you. It's well, just so not a good So where is the trial device for the Inspire? So here's what he says. He says, you know, maybe we should yep. force dentists to use a more affordable, cheap yep. device he prior, used cheap. prior to paying all this money for the custom oral device Mm -hmm. and he goes you know like in inspire Mm -hmm. before we do inspire we do a dice procedure dice is d-i-s-e drug induced sleep endoscopy Mm -hmm. so an anesthesiologist you go to the surgery center an anesthesiologist puts you to sleep then they put a scope an ent puts a scope down your nose down your throat and they video and they watch where your throat constricts at night when Mm -hmm. you're while you're sleeping so you're in drug induced sleep with an anesthesiologist he says before we will authorize uh, the, you know, in his in his mind, it's it makes sense to uh, do that first to 
be okay with doing the more expensive, more invasive procedure because it's a forty thousand dollar Inspire procedure is a forty thousand dollar cost. But the for, cost, for, wait, wait, I'm wondering what the what, like what's the cost to the device? Well, I mean, the, well, that's the, where the, I'm like coming the, from. The cost let's of say, the device. Let's is say probably, the, the cost of the device. Like, let's is, say it's a thousand. It's a thousand dollar device. Yet we're going to do four forty thousand yes. dollars worth of work. Well, but but beyond that, just to just to pre-authorize it, mm-hmm. we're going to do drug-induced sleep endoscopy. What is the cost of an anesthesiologist, yep. an ENT, an endo- endoscopy procedure, and the surgery center just for that? That's about a $5,000 cost. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do $5,000 to authorize the $40,000 procedure, mm-hmm. but yet not be okay with the $2,500 oral right. appliance. Right. The it's- drug-induced sleep endoscopy itself is more expensive than the oral and appliance. So- not to mention we're cutting on people. Not right. to mention your yeah and anesthesia anesthesia. Um, so I you know it's Brandon knows me a little closer. So I deal with that almost on a daily basis. Even during that call, one of the things was uh, one of the dentists or it could have been another one saying, "Well, you know, uh, oral appliance turnaround time's horrible." And I literally in front of all these big and I'm not supposed to talk during this. I said, "Well, not now. Uh, you can't get a CPAP. You can get an oral like appliance fast. You now. get a you get a and they kind of got quiet." saying, wow, the turnaround time. But there's this misconception. The steps that we need to retrain people. Inspire's done an amazing job. Their commercials are great. They they well, just came over with the it. past three months, oh. there's been a huge marketing yep. push. Oh, yeah. That's why the, I oh, wonder we're all why. talking about this shit. So my question is, awesome. I think that's great, but there's a step before that. Yes. And it is oral device. Exactly. It is, there's a step to, before it all. Yep. It's oral device. Well, and, to, and the yeah. first step is, is getting the knowledge to get the physician's to screen and test the patients. Yep. We have so we have 80% we, of these patients out there aren't diagnosed. We go back to earning your heart on, earning your sleep. Right. Like the first step is get your life right, man. Let's right. let's see if you can work out. Right. Now, after you work out, after you eat well, is it then necessary change your diet? Change Make your diet some modifications. a little bit. I mean, and not not insanely, yeah. but just don't eat McDonald's 5 times out of the week. Do you hear that handsome Dan? But so 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 okay. So that's I mean, that is the, the, the load bearing is on the individual at that point in time, and that's sure, but, the problem. But compliance that's what, that's has always been issues. Right, yeah. right. But then secondarily, so that's the first step. The second step is let's look, look at the next most affordable option there that will impact the life the least, and that without a doubt that that is an oral appliance. Yep. And then secondarily, we what we can do is we can throw a machine on you. Now, it won't be comfortable, but at the same time, it's going to prevent your sleep apnea. And then, and then, and only then, will we look into surgery. Like, that is the I natural mean, evasive, Think about it. Non-evasive shit. is the way we need to treat. 100%. There's always this thing to get there, to home. There but is no financial incentive to do go. any of the, to do it any, out of that order in any other way. There's yep. no physical incentive to do it out of that order in any other way. Mm-hmm. Like, the, 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 like, this is the way it should be. Right. I, in the way it has, we have it so upside down right now in the modern American medical yep. system. Yep. Yep. And, and because of the competing interest, especially given from the, you know, the higher ups, which is essentially the insurance then, as well as the multi- without, without divulging too much. So what I did briefly before I came to my, to Somnomed, I was director of managed care for a DME company out of California. And I did it for a year and a half. COVID hit, laid off people, blah, blah, blah. And his hair. having that, <laughs> no, I've always been bald. You see my back though, a lot of hair. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's it, it's so interesting because when I'm trying to do contracts with them, initial meetings, and the blues down here, Blue Cross Blue Shield, it, it it's just interesting. And but there is a way around that as well. Meaning y'all's model um, is excellent. Trying to mimic that model in other states, in other areas of the state is really hard, but it goes back to what we talked about. Like I say, earning your heart on, that should be a t-shirt. Well, running a business is hard. Well, I think uh, life's hard. I, I think it can be, I, yeah. but my point is that th- it, there's an easy way out of surgery. There's an easy way out to take medicine. There's an easy way out. If, if I don't have to exercise, if I don't have to do these things and I can take, I meant for years, you guys probably were around the same age. I'm older, way older than handsome Dan is that that blood pressure was a big deal. Remember they talked yeah. about the gold standard, of what your BP needs to be, systolic, diastolic, before you get on a medicine, and it just kept getting lower and lower. Yeah. I wonder yeah. why that They're is. changing it. Right? Well, well yeah. same yeah. thing. That's, that's big pharma. Well, so so here, here's what I would like to see, is why isn't sleep testing as ubiquitous as taking what, this sphygmometer? 
Like, is that Sigma manometer. Yes, what that did you call me? So, yeah, but like, why? Is wait, it, wait, we're on a so, show here. So ev- just... every year, if you're taking care of yourself, you're taking blood panels. Right. You're making sure that you know what your 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 blood pressure is. Right. Why aren't we throwing a sleep test in on this? Like, As, why especially with the a... home testing and how affordable home testing exactly. is. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like within the past two years, we've seen a revolution in home testing. Amen. Why especially can't COVID. that be yep, a right. call for everybody? I mean, hell, dude, when I'm 40, I got to get a finger stuck up my ass. Really? Like, I've been what? doing it since college. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hedgecock and I do that together. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I like the, you broke the fourth wall. That's what we call that. You yeah. just looked in the camera. When you yeah. stick um, a finger in, it's called breaking the fourth wall <laughs> how many holes we got mouth ear one two yeah well, you got two three ears. four yeah. Yeah. Fourth, wall. fourth wall don't forget yeah. the belly but, button i mean seriously like why why is this not something that we do on a routine right. basis to just test health i mean hell we all have the wearables that tell us whether or not we're sleeping all right, right. now th- those have 50 percent efficacy if we're lucky and like, I don't understand how backwards this is and it will save everybody. I'm going to tell you, I'm so optimistic, Max, and you're going to think I'm crazy because I'm in new to the industry. So let me use the new card and be the baby face. But there's legislation. I think there's lobbyists right now that, that it needs to be where, and I'll put this on film. Dentists need to be able to sleep. Dentists need to be able to put out that HSD. And it is going to happen within my career. I just think I was at the point when they launched HST and I was like, oh, this will never work. This will never be approved. They got to do it in lab and a nap. I mean, I've been dealing with sleep for years. That's the argument for the Inspire, though. Yeah. Like, well, right. you know, and it may or may not, but regardless of whether that changes, I'm I think that's a, fine with the physicians. That's a, that's doing a that big shit. push right now. And I think the dentists are making it a political issue. And I, I don't know that that's the right thing to do either. No, I agree. Like, I, I think that because that, that I don't, may, I don't, that want, may, I don't want to say all dentists. I just that think may I don't further want to know the blood divide. Panels. That may further divide. There's already a divide between yeah, the physicians. I, dude, I, but hear me out to, to work on. OK, so we disagree. That's cool. I just think that there needs to be any time that we have, you guys look inside a mouth and any time that we can get an HST, I don't care if it's yeah. doctor or physician, I don't care if it's a dentist, we should be able to do that initial. You just gave the greatest example. There's wearables, there's rings now, there's different things out there that we could do that. This is silly to me. I, I agree with you on that. And I think that there's, but there's also ways around that. There's companies out there. I'm not in the diagnosis you know, business. You, you Sleeptest.com and business. places like that that do a good job of that. And, um, man, we got, there's so much more that we could talk about. Uh, we, we're running we, short we on right, time. Are we run, oh, yeah, we're, we're right we, there. We're, 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 we got to wrap this up. That flew by. But, so, so what we're going to do here and, and Max, I, I, I love you like a brother and, and I'm going to use you, um, because I, I think there's more to this discussion and, and I, I know you got a busy schedule today, so we'll let you go here. Uh, but. I think we bring you back sometime. Absolutely. I think there's, I think yeah. there's more to discuss here in terms of Consider this, me a this industry. A filler? Like, yeah, when y'all can't get... Yeah. So are you going to be my Jimmy Kimmel's any, Matt Damon? Well, we ran out of time today <laughs> for Max Kerr. Sorry, couldn't make no. Yeah, yeah. Um, Please. And I want to say something Matt real quick Damon. before we get off. Um, <laughs> we got a lot to discuss, so we didn't yeah. get to the cooking. We didn't get to the hunting. Yeah. You're definitely going to come back, uh, but we got to do wrap up how we always do. What did you think of your? Uh, would you have four of them? Uh, uh, two stiff ones. Two, two stiff That's ones. That's what she said. There you go. Great album. <laughs> Wasn't that a widespread <laughs> panic album? <laughs> two, two stiff, stiff ones. ones. <laughs> the fourth oh, wall. The uh, fourth so, what did you think of the the whiskey? This is Garrison Brothers. This is from High Texas, uh, right up the road here. I didn't know y'all uh, were ventriloquists. This is cool. Garrison Brothers, uh, Texas straight whiskey, small batch. Uh, really cool, cool people there, okay. and. Uh, Honestly, I, I have to apologize uh, to Jenny. This was Jenny's uh, Christmas gift from my parents <laughs> to her, and we just totally used it up. So, we'll Do, have we introduced one. Jenny? Well, no, but we will. Okay. We will. Right That's now, his imaginary. Right, uh, right right he has sex he, doll. He used to have. He used to have four personalities. Now it's just, <laughs> just one. But Max, what'd you think? Of the, no, the drink? loved it. I appreciate y'all pouring me up. What'd pour you think up. about the, the the flow here, the podcast? I loved it, man. Cool. I think we got we're, we're just scratching the surface. I we agree. Got a, lot, a lot more places to go with this. Well, hey, we got it. And I, and I and I to if I could, I really appreciate y'all doing this. You know, so often in the sleep world, we're either talking about 
we're, we're talking too much about science. We're talking too much about business. Right. We're not talking enough about what it means to the real person. Right. Um, now, fortunately, you know, we have, uh, we have ways to treat people, but you know, I don't think that's what this is. I think this is more about just kind of getting the word out and showing that, Hey, we're a part of this human organism and we want to be, a, we want to help out in any way we well, can. And, and in terms of health and wellness, I, this is, I'll come back to this time and time again. This is one of the four pillars of health. I mean, our, our sleep, uh, it doesn't matter if you eat well. It doesn't matter if you work out. It doesn't matter if you meditate or do any of that stuff. Right. Uh, if you're not sleeping and yeah. getting the sleep you need and the quality of sleep you need, mm-hmm. you're not getting the full benefit. You're right. not being the healthiest person that you can be. Amen. All so. right, let's end it how we do. Uh, Max, thank you for sleeping around with Dr. Brandon and Matthew. Yep. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you. Handsome Dan, thank you. When the sun goes down.